Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic graph theory. Today, I would like to talk about a different spectrum. Um, it will be a bit kind of, we need to get started eventually. So, so we get started today, but I also show you already one application of this new uh, type of spectrum. And the spectrum will be called the Laplacian, the Laplace spectrum. And it's well related to what we will see in this video, the Laplace matrix. And I always personally had some trouble motivating that. So kind of adjacency matrix, yeah, that makes sense. That matrix should know a little bit about my graph. And the Laplacian is a bit kind of a strange construction in first sight, um, but kind of in hindsight, we know that this is really, really good, really, really powerful. So believe me here, but I'm trying to motivate it as uh, the slogan that we can take the degree of a vertex kind of into the matrix, not just the, the edges, but also kind of the degree. And we might get some finer or at least different type of information than what is actually in the um, adjacency matrix. So that's what we're going to do. So here my standard example of a graph, uh, six vertices, whatever you see here. Um, and I really would like to have graphs. So I don't like loops. I don't like double edges right now. Uh, so here's my graph. And clearly we can write down the adjacency matrix. So I've done that in the past 10 videos or so. <laughs> so I hope everyone is now reasonably familiar uh, with an adjacency matrix. If not, let's just do it again. So here's vertex five. I look at the fifth uh, column. I look at its neighbors, one, two, four, and I write my little ones here, one, two, four. So that's the adjacency matrix. And it really makes sense to me. It kind of is the connectivity of a graph just in form of a matrix. So somehow, it, I should expect that kind of the spectrum gives me something funny or interesting or uh, remarkable here. And it does. That's what I tried to, or at least I tried to convince you that it does in the previous video. So adjacency matrix or little A here makes absolutely sense. And then I have my little D, which is a very, very strange, well, not, not very strange, but it's somehow a very boring matrix. I just put the degrees on the diagonal. Right? So I just put the degrees on the diagonal. Degree of one, degree is just the uh, number of neighboring vertices, is two, so I put a two. Degree of two is three, so I put a three, right? Uh, degree of six is one, so I put a one, right? So that's what I do. I just put them on the diagonal, and I get a diagonal matrix. Uh, note that the spectrum of this matrix is really boring. It's just a degree because it's a diagonal matrix. So um, just as it is, D is a bit too boring somehow. A is great, B is, D is boring. So the whole idea, that's kind of what makes it somehow work, at least for me, why the Laplacian makes sense, is to put them together uh, in one matrix. And that's exactly what the Laplacian is. It's essentially the sum of them, but it turns out that you assign is somehow better that's related to various, like if you have seen root systems or something, you, you will recognize the signs. Um, but let's just go for it. So it's really just the Laplacian is just the degree matrix minus the adjacency matrix. So what you will see is you will see the degree sequence on the diagonal as we had it before. And then we will see uh, the negative ones or, on the off diagonal here, the negative, uh, the, the negative connectivity on the off diagonal, right? We had this here for five, for example, and you just see uh, all the negatives. And as I said, it's not quite clear, or at least to me, as I said, I repeat myself, but anyway, I felt like a broken record anyway. Um, so the adjacency matrix, it somehow makes sense. Um, the Laplacian, it's not quite clear why actually uh, there should be something interesting going on beyond the kind of the usual spectrum, but it is. So there is something really great going on. And I will denote the spectrum of this matrix by LS, so the Laplace spectrum. And again, it will be ordered. So I just take my mu one up to mu n, and mu one is the biggest one, mu n is the smallest one. And well, spoiler, spoiler, otherwise I pro probably wouldn't make a video. Well, who knows? But anyway, spoiler, spoiler, this matrix is actually uh, pretty great. And I show you at least one absolutely fabulous application um, today, which I will make more precise or in this video, which I will make more precise. Today, by the way, doesn't make any sense for in the video because you can watch this anytime. So let me try again. In this video, I will show you at least one application, which I then explain a little bit more details uh, in another video. But anyway, 
So let's do some examples. So here is the adjacency matrix of the line graph so with three elements. It's pretty, pretty simple, right? One is connected to two, two is connected to one and three, and three is connected to two. And its spectrum, that's what it is. And here are the eigenvectors. There are three eigenvectors, so one for square root of two and so on. Um, and as you can see, well, one for minus square root of two, one for zero, I can fill them up. And as you can see, that's what it is. There's some square roots of twos, and there's some twos, and there's some zeros, and the minus ones. Anyway, so here is the uh, Laplacian. So this is just A. Here's the Laplacian. The degree is on the diagonal, right? So degree one, degree two, degree one. And the adjacency matrix is kind of everywhere else, but it was a sign. And you will see that the spectrum is really quite different. So in this case, it's three, one, zero. It's quite different from uh, square root of two, zero, minus two. And also the eigenvectors are very different. So the one for three is just the uh, one, one, one. Um, the one here, the one here. Let me just briefly explain how to read this notation. So if you have a graph and an adjacency matrix, both of them are essentially adjacency matrices, and you can write down the eigenvector by just labeling the vertices of the graph, because this would just mean here is my vector one, 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 and by the way I labeled columns and rows of my matrix, that's exactly how it should work out. Anyway, so it already gets pretty different. Pretty different doesn't mean it's useful, but at least it's not the same, right? It's not, it's not absolutely not clear how to go from um, this spectrum to the Laplace spectrum. So it looks very different. And they somehow encode related information, obviously, because they're kind of the same type of matrix, but still different. So you can play games with one of them and you can't play with the other, which is kind of the whole point of this game. Um, let me just show you some, one of them. So for example, the eigenvalues, and this was a muse, the Laplace eigenvalues are usually um, just bounded, or they're not usually, they are bounded by the degree. So since the degree somehow sits on the diagonal, uh, you can bound um, the eigenvalues, um, the mu i's by the degree. So in the following way, so for all t equals, I guess, one to n, not zero to n, you can just sum up the mu i, and they will always be lower or equal to uh, the number of vertices of that degree uh, counting upwards. Right, so, um, so mu i, mu one, for example, will be lower or equal to uh, the number of vertices v, where a degree is at most, uh, uh, what is it, one. All right, so you can uh, just sum them up nicely here. Note that you count vertices several times in that formula, right? We start with the ones that have a degree at most one, and then we kind of go upwards that counts several vertices multiple times, and that's totally fine. Anyway, and there are many more numerical facts about the Laplace spectrum, which we're going to explain uh, or explore, but let me just show you how it looks like for, uh, for small graphs, which somehow, for some reasons, here is red in this direction. So here's our example from before, just swapped. Um, that happens if you just steal your pictures from somewhere and somewhere else, they decide to use a different convention. Anyway, doesn't really matter. As you can see, it somehow is quite different unless you have some uh, really not so exciting graphs, like the graphs that are completely disconnected. I mean, they are not super exciting with the spectrum, but otherwise the Laplace spectrum is quite different from the usual spectrum. Okay, let me just, as promised, show you some kind of really cool application of the Laplace spectrum. Again, using the same notation as before, but putting uh, the eigenvector directly on the graph, so the entries of the eigenvector. Okay, and what happens is, so let's say you want to somehow cheaply cut a graph into two large pieces. I will make that more precise. Uh, in another video, but let's just let's just go for it. You don't want to sillyly cut off an edge that's too boring, but you kind of want to have a cheap cut, so not too many edges, and you want to have two big pieces of your graph. And it's not so easy. How should that work? It's not quite clear. You probably need need to go through all cuts or something. Uh, very very difficult a priori, but a trick 
<laughs> a really great trick that kind of works pretty often is you take the second largest Laplacian eigenvalue. So for this graph, it happens to be uh, 0.51, whatever. And you label the graph with the corresponding uh, eigenvector. And the cut is given by where everything changes signs. So the graph is everything, including the dotted edges. And the cut is given by the dotted edges. And here along the dotted edges, as you can see, uh, the eigenvector changes signs. And that's kind of a very easy way to kind of find a good cut. And as you can see, it's not so bad, actually. So here you have a subgraph of order four, and here you have a subgraph of order five, and it was a pretty good cut. So quite evenly two large pieces and only two edges. And a very simple rule, just cut wherever the, 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 the eigenvector changes sign or the entries of the eigenvector uh, change sign. And I call this the first application, we'll make that precise later on. But this first application already shows you somehow, and that's a trick that you can't play with the adjacency matrix itself. So there's some new layer of information in this Laplacian, although it's kind of a little bit silly how it is defined. You just take the adjacency matrix and you add the degree matrix. That's essentially what it is. But there's some new interesting information uh, hidden in this uh, Laplacian that we will explore uh, as we go along. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.